Hello there, dear people. Welcome to this time of worship with Faith Lutheran Church, Warradale. We've just begun a new, a new series for the season of Epiphany, and it's, um, it's, it's shining a light on the mission of the church. And today we ask, well, why shine, why share? The answer is found in the text that we had, where the Lord says through the prophet Isaiah, I'll give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. That's why we would shine. That's why we would share the good news of the Lord. You'll hear that in the word that is read aloud to you, and you'll hear that in the teaching time. God bless you with his word. We're here in God's name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're just going to see what does God have to say about that in the Word. And today the Word, I think, gives us some answers as to why should we? Why? Why would we share and shine God's love with other people? Why would we do that? All right. And here's the answer in Isaiah 42, 6, 7. You might read it with me. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. We said before we'll hear about Jesus' baptism, and here's our opening sentences from uh, the uh, Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus had been baptised, a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved with whom I am well pleased. Let's share the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 29, can I ask you to stand as we um, speak the words of this psalm, as the Lord speaks them into our hearts. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name and worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Not like mine. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon and he makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young ox, a wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry, glory. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. May the Lord bless his people with peace. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, You proclaimed Jesus as your dear son at his baptism and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. May all who are baptised into Christ remain faithful in their calling to be your children and inherit eternal life with him. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 42, from verse, nine, from verse 1. Here is my servant, I have made him strong. He is my chosen one, I am pleased with him. I have given him my spirit, and he will bring justice to the nations. He won't shout or yell or call out in the streets. He won't break off a bent reed or put out a dying flame, but he will make sure that justice is done. He won't quit or give up until he brings justice everywhere on earth and people in foreign nations long for his teaching. 
I am the Lord God. I created the heavens like an open tent above. I made the earth and everything that grows on it. I am the source of life for all who live on this earth, so listen to what I say. I chose you to bring justice, and I am here at your side. I selected you and sent you to bring light and my promise of hope to the nations. You will give sight to the blind. You will set prisoners free from dark dungeons. My name is the Lord. I won't let idols or humans share my glory and play, praise. Everything has happened, just as I said it would. Now I will announce what will happen next. This is the word of our awesome Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord for, for the reminder, reminder of how awesome you are. Now, second reading is from Acts 10, starting at verse 34. Peter then said, Now I am certain that God treats all people alike. God is pleased with everyone who worships him and does right, no matter what nation they come from. This is the same message that God gave to the people of Israel when he sent Jesus Christ, the Lord of all, to offer peace to them. You surely know what happened everywhere in Judea. It all began in Galilee after John had told everyone to be baptised. God gave the Holy Spirit and power to Jesus from Nazareth. He was with Jesus as he went around doing good and healing everyone who was under the power of the devil. We all saw what Jesus did, both in Israel and in the city of Jerusalem. Jesus was put to death on a cross, but three days later, God raised him to life and let him be seen. Not everyone saw him. He was seen only by us, who ate and drank with him after he was raised from death. We were the ones God chose to tell others about him. God told us to announce clearly to the people that Jesus is the one who has chosen to judge the living and the dead. Every one of the prophets has said that all who have faith in Jesus will have their sins forgiven in his name. This is the word of the Lord for all people everywhere. Thank you, Lord. For including us as your family. And the gospel is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Jesus left Galilee and went to the Jordan River to be baptised by John. But John kept objecting and said, I ought to be baptised by you. Why have you come to me? And Jesus answered, for now this is how it should be, because we must all do what God wants us to do. Then John agreed. So Jesus was baptised. And as soon as he came out of the water, the sky opened and he saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. Then a voice from heaven said, This is my own dear Son, and I am pleased with him. This is the Lord's good news for us today. We, we praise you, Jesus, Jesus, light of the world, and we pray. Thank, Thank you, Lord Jesus, Jesus for revealing Jesus yourself at your baptism as God's dear Son. Fill us, your baptised children, with your spirit. Amen. Hey, got a couple of little kids here. Ezekiel, Charlotte. They're in the loo. You know what this is? What is it? A torch. A torch. Check it out. Check it out and see how bright it is. Wow, that is so bright, isn't it? What do you use torch for? Turn it off now if you like. What do you use it for? Looking, yeah. What do you use looking for what? Looking for things in your house. For things in your house, in the dark, in particular in the dark, yeah. Would you even use it for looking for koalas in the tree at night? Mm. Yeah, we could. What else could we use a torch for, big kids? To make the cat go crazy. To make the cat go crazy. Oh, he's a nasty man, isn't he? I wouldn't dream of trying to make a cat go crazy. <laughs> what else would you use a torch for? Let's ask these big kids, what else would you use a torch for? 
to light up your path yeah, when you're stumbling around in the dark, as older gentlemen sometimes do in the middle of the night. Let's not mention any names, Russell. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what? Hey. Hey? If you're in a cave and you need to find your way home, yeah, yeah. I want to tell you a real story. Can I, can I have the torch back for a minute? I want to tell you a real story. The other day, you know Auntie Sarah? You know Auntie Sarah? Mother of Hannah and Emily and, yeah, that Auntie Sarah. Your mum's cousin, yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter. She's a lovely lady, believe me. She's my daughter. Um, <coughs> She was at our place and she, somehow her earring got tangled up in Hannah's hair and she lost the back of her earring. It was daylight and she looked and looked and looked and looked and she couldn't find that earring. So I thought, brainwave, I'll go and get the torch. And I got the torch and I came out and even in the daylight, we went up and down with the torch on the ground and we were looking for that piece. So even though it was daylight, there are a lot of things that show up that you can't always easily see. So guess what happened? We didn't find it. <laughs> but it's out there somewhere. And one day it'll show up. We're a bit worried that it might show up in an unsavoury place. It could have got swallowed by a baby. But, but the point is, torch, even in daylight, can shine a light that makes a big difference. Now, I want to talk about other dark places. I want to say that sometimes your heart can be a bit dark. What does that mean? That your heart can be a bit dark. Well, perhaps I'll help you. Well, perhaps the big kids could talk. What, what happens when people's hearts are a bit dark? What's going on when, we, when our hearts are a bit dark? Really angry. Oh, people are feeling really angry. Yeah, what else? Ashamed. Feeling ashamed. Oh, yeah, feeling bad. Yeah. Sad. Sad. Unwell. Unwell, even. Yeah. Unloved. Unloved. Do any of these things ever happen to you, Ezekiel, you five-year-old boy? Yeah? <laughs> Do you ever feel a bit sad? Do you ever feel a bit hangry? Do you ever feel a bit upset with your sister yeah. Yeah, and your mum and dad? Yeah. I'd have to say, mum and not mum and dad. No, no of course not. Um, I'd have to say that that is kind of like a dark thing in your heart. And God says, well, get over the fact that this is actually sin in our hearts. This is us being more interested in us than interested in our mum and dad or interested in our sister Charlotte. And it's sin. And he says, I've given a really special light to shine into your heart and shine away, like we use that to try to find out, the find the lost things. He says, I'll use the light, the torch of my love to shine in your heart to find those sad, hurting, angry, broken places and heal them so that you can be at peace. Do you want to be that way? You think that's a better way to be than angry and hurt and shamed? And yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So this is a gift of God for you. It's a gift of God for your sisters. It's a gift of God for your mum and dad, for your grandparents. Your grandma, by the way, is celebrating a birthday today. Did you know that? Yeah. All right. Let's pray for the little ones and the big ones. God, we thank you that you will like use the torch of your love to shine into our hearts. Use the torch of your love to shine into Ezekiel and Charlotte and Annika and Matilda and all of us grown-up children too to shine away the darkness, set us free so that we can shine into the lives of other people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So over half a millennium ago. So when's that? That's, uh, that's maybe 500 years back, isn't it? Over, over that amount. Um, when there was this prophet, and his name was Isaiah. And 
he had this to say. Oh, there's the shining torch. I didn't use it. This is what he had to say. You could read it with me. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who are in darkness. Now when any person is baptised, they they are entering into this same covenant with the Lord. We're actually chosen to be his living, shining presence in the world. He seals us all into Jesus. We're washed, we're covered. And it's all the more amazing because the deal is sealed with Jesus' own blood. His blood cut the covenant with us and the Lord. His blood forgives us sets us free from the power of Satan. And why? Why? Well, because he has things for us to do. He has good things, good plans for us. So that we can make the most of this precious gift of life, eternal life even, that God has given us. Again, why? Well, for us to get out and shine the light of God's love into the hearts and lives of people in our homes, in our neighbours' homes, in our community, in our workplaces. In a wonderful way, we share the Lord's blessing that he placed over Jesus. When Jesus was baptised, when he said, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased, he's saying that over you and me too. You are my beloved children. You please me. I love you. This is... God's blessing for us today. We are loved by God. When Jesus was baptised, something totally unexpected happened. The expected order of things was reversed. Think about it. So who's Jesus? What did John call Jesus when he saw Jesus coming in a distance? What did he say? Behold! The Lamb of God. So Jesus comes down to where John is baptising people and Jesus starts to walk into the water perhaps saying, John, I want you to baptise me too. And what does John say? Oh, no. I should be baptised by you, not you, by me. That's what John expected, isn't it? When he saw Jesus coming. But expect the unexpected because Jesus turned it right around. And he said, I might be the Lamb of God, but I've come here to be baptised by you. There's the words. Jesus answered him and said, now this is how it should be. Because we must do all God wants us to do. And then when God came into the picture... The unexpected becomes the reality and John agrees. He sees the wisdom of what Jesus had to say. So why shine? Why share? Well, because the Lord wants all people to share in the same blessing, the blessing of baptism, to be baptised into Jesus. He wants all people to be safe and saved, not just for this life, but for eternity. And then he sends us as lights, lights to the nations, to shine and to share even in unexpected ways. So what if out of the blue something totally unexpected happened in a way that the Lord gave you an opportunity to shine and share? Aren't you in... You're in Woolworths or Ikea or Aldi. And suddenly God gives you a wonderful little opportunity right there in front of you to shine and share. You didn't expect it, but by goodness, there it is. Bang, in front of you. What's going to happen? Well, if we're listening to the Lord and if we're tuned in, perhaps on the prompting of his spirit, we might say, "Uh uh-huh, I see. Here's a need. 
I wonder how I can shine some light into this space. And, and this is true for all of us in all the circumstances of our life, isn't it? It, it might be for you there as a dental technician. <laughs> There might be opportunities to shine some of God's light, not just that bright light that you shine into people's mouths, to shine some other kind of light into people's hearts. For you, as, as a, a brilliant scientist and a doctor, you know, the work you're doing might be shining a light. It is, in fact, shining a light on, on the wider knowledge and understanding that God is bringing into the hearts and lives of the world, making a difference in the whole world of radiography and the way we interpret can you see God at work in that? That God would use Alex here for that? Is it, is it easy to shine a light in prison? I reckon it's the easiest place of all because that's often where some of the darkest things are. What's it like as a police officer? Can a police officer shine God's light into some of the dark places that a police officer encounters? What about you as a neighbour? See, we don't need all these exceptional circumstances it's everyday, normal places and times, normal situations that we are accustomed to as husband, as wife, as grandparent, as grandchild, as friend, as mother, as mother, father, father-in-law, mother-in-law. Normal places where God can, in an unexpected way, give us an opportunity to shine. And that's what he wants us to do. And you might be tempted to say, whoa, Lord, no, 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 no. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it. I don't know what to do. So thank you, Lord, for revealing that to me, but no thanks. And we tiptoe on and, and leave that hurting, broken opportunity waiting, that need for love hanging and go our own way. Ah, that happens to me too. That happens to me too. It doesn't change the fact that God does give these unexpected opportunities to shine his light and love. Make a difference of love in people's lives. So here's some things, perhaps, that we could do or say or perhaps give us courage or understanding from the word of God that we have already heard today that might encourage us in why we should share and shine. The first one comes in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5. And all of the verses in this passage in some way speak to this. But it's important for us to know that if, if God gives us that opportunity, it's not something we're going to do in our own strength. The source of this life, the source of this, the source of this love, the source of this shining, whether or not it's a, what, the battery perhaps that goes behind this to, to make the torch shine, the source is who? It's the Lord. God claims that. I am the source of life for everyone who lives on this earth. So listen to me. When I open up the unexpected opportunity for you, Listen to me. Second, and again in Isaiah, God reminds us that we are personally chosen. He's selected us, you and me, to be witnesses to his light, to shine his light, to shine his love in ways that we might never have dreamed possibly or in ways that we've realised we could but perhaps up to this point haven't seized the moment and gifted and given and shone and shared into the lives of other people. God reminds us, I chose you. I chose you to bring justice. I'm here with you. I've selected you. I've sent you to bring my light, my promise of hope to the nations. And that nation might be the person sitting right next to you. There's simple ways sometimes. It might be a loving arm. It might be seeing a person stumble and reaching out and lifting them up, quite literally. Well, there might be other ways that people stumble and we bring to them some strength, some courage, some new ways of loving 
and lifting them up. It might be something that value adds a person's life in a way that shines some love and care in an unexpected way into their dark or dull place. Dark or dull places. Who likes to own up to that? Who, lo- who, who, who of you among us, myself even, how many of us actually will own up to the darkness and the dullness that's in our lives? Willingly. If I said, how are you going? What's our natural response? Yeah, good, fine. <laughs> yeah, good, fine. See, uh, actually, actually, I'm feeling rather dark today. <laughs> that doesn't sound right, does it? But it might be the truth. And so expect that, that the people around us are, are perhaps in that same place. We can't know that that person's in darkness because of something. But by golly, we can look and say, Lord, give us wisdom and insight to discern what might be some darkness or dullness happening in people's lives. We can't all be like Priscilla, psychologist, who gets to ask the deep questions. But maybe we can, in our own way, using the relationships, even the new relationships that God trusts us with, the unexpected times and places, to find out a little bit about that darkness and to bring some light and to bring some hope and maybe even to bring some mercy of God, even his word, into that place. A word of love, a word of grace, a word of peace truly blesses people, especially when, they're near, when they are in a dark place. Thirdly, it's important for us to know that this is not a new message that God sends us with. There's nothing new about this. It's always been there. We heard about it uh, in the book of Acts. It's the Lord's age-old message, the Lord's age-old promise, the promise, the presence of peace. Peace. Isaiah promised a Messiah. What what was one of the names they would call him? The Prince of Peace. So it's the same message that we are sent with to bring that same gift of God into those unexpected places that need peace, that need light, that need love, that need compassion, that need mercy, that need empathy, that that need simply to be accepted and recognised and honoured and blessed. So in a totally unexpected way, you know, that peace can actually change a person's heart. Hey, this person accepts me. This person will sit with me. This person will, will help me in a way that I don't necessarily deserve or in a way that I don't at all expect. This is God at work and he uses us in that space. The fourth thing that we heard in the reading, and this time we go to the Psalms, is that it's good for us to realise that there's power in this. Now, I don't know about you, but I know about me, and sometimes I feel pretty weak. (laughs) Sometimes I wonder, Lord... What could I do? How could I do it? Lord, I'm not really a strong person. Now, somebody said to me once, oh, Tim, you're a very strong person. And I thought, oh, no, I'm not. (laughs) But, you know, it's not my strength. It's not your strength. It's the strength of the Lord. The strength of the Lord who's whose voice makes the lightning flash, the strength of the Lord, whose voice makes the deserts tremble. This is the strength that we serve in. This is the strength with which we love. Who am I? Somebody asked in scriptures, a a trembling reed, even (laughs) Jesus, a trembling reed, a place, somebody that doesn't even have a place to lay his own head. But yet within him was the full strength and power of God, the living word, 
the word of God. And you and I, baptised into Jesus, we have that same access to the power, to the strength of God. So when we're in one of those unexpected places, perhaps we could just swallow and maybe say what God puts in our heart and in our mind. Maybe do what he puts in our heart and our mind, trusting in the strength of the Lord. It may, it may be knocked back, but it may be received and likely make a huge difference in the heart and life of that person struggling with their darkness and their dullness. If we consider ourselves as speaking or living the word of the Lord into the lives of other people, then it's good for us to realise that the power and awe of the Lord's voice is for real and he will work that through us. This is no apologetic excuse of a voice, but one that can be spoken with confidence and boldness. doesn't have to be loud, can be quite soft, doesn't have to be overt, could be quite quiet and silent and even unseen, but certainly felt and experienced. Finally, over this season of Epiphany, we will follow this theme, shining a light on sharing faith. Today, the word is asked, and we've been asked, why shine? Why share? The answer really is quite simple. Because that's what Jesus has done for us. And because Jesus has done this for us, he rightly asks us to do the same for each other, for family, for friends, for neighbours, even for strangers. Remember? Do you remember why he gave us as his gift for the world? Perhaps you might read it with me. I will gift you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. Wow. What a privilege, hey? That's why. That's why. The Lord bless you with peace and confidence as he gifts you with opportunities, unexpected opportunities, to shine and share his love with others. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, please open up our hearts, our ears and our eyes to see and to hear, to understand and to recognise the needs of others who, like us, experience dullness and darkness in their lives. And then when we recognise those situations, open our hearts to love them, to share and shine your mercy and peace into their lives, just as you have done into ours. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus, who loves us so very much. Amen.
Christ has set me free. So thank you for sharing in this time with us. I certainly hope and pray that what you've heard has been an encouragement to you, whatever your circumstances, that the Lord will give you unexpected opportunities to share and to shine God's love. So I want to send you out with his blessing now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace now and always. Amen. Bye for now.